Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody's doing well. And today we have part two with Agent Joe Pistone, the real Donnie Brasco. The comments that came in about our first uh, interview were off the hook. You people really loved it. You enjoyed it. It was great. You heard information you never heard anywhere else. You never saw it in the movie, just different stuff. And wait till you hear what's coming up next. Part two, Agent Donnie Brasco, Joe Pistone. Stay tuned. After it came out who I was in the papers, right? Sonny knows that he's, that he's kind of, because, you know, he introduces me to Santo Traficante. Mm -hmm. He introduces me to, I mean, you know. Everybody, yeah, that mean. Uh, everybody. <clears throat> so he kind of knows that, that, that he's got a problem. So he gets, and you, you probably know this, I mean, he gets a phone call that he's got to go to a, a sit down. And mm -hmm. this is really true because I got it from his girlfriend at the time who I knew. And I'll, I'll get to that. He walks in a motion lounge. Now, <laughs> to me, this is a this is a guy that you got to respect. Like your dad. I, 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 I've told you this before. I, I had a lot of respect for your dad because this is the way it is. And this is the way it is. And he didn't he didn't take a step off that path. Sonny walks into the motion lounge, says to the bar, takes off his diamond ring, gives it to the bartender, takes his money, gives it to the bartender, takes all the keys, but the keys to his caddy, and says, I'm going to sit down, and I'm probably not going to come back. <laughs> How many guys are going to do that? Joe, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I would have done it. So, you know. No. no. So <clears throat> then he calls his, then he calls, uh, his, his lady friend and says, uh, I want you to get in touch with Donnie. And you tell Donnie that uh, uh, you tell Donnie, I don't have any ill feelings toward him. I loved him. He was better than, he was just better than us. And he never flaked us. Wow. Right? Yeah. And how we know is that later, you know, then he goes, he goes and they whack him. They whack him. And then his lady friend calls, calls the FBI and says, you know, and uh, so we meet in Washington and she rela she relays that story to me. Now that that had that to, got, that that had to had get to, to you. Yeah. That brought some tears, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that's the kind of guy he was, you know. I mean, how many guys are going to do that? I mean, you know, you're going to go. He knows it. Why would he give all this stuff up? Yeah. And yeah. then. And then say to say to the bartender, you know, I got to go to a sit down, and I'm probably not going to come back. That's uh, yeah. me. I, I I didn't know that, but I, I mean, yeah. we. I mean, that came right. That came right from uh, right from uh, Jude, uh, you know, his his lady friend. Yeah, they, yeah. They, I guess in the movie Donnie Brasco, they tried to show that with yeah, uh, with made, Lefty. Yeah, they, they made their Lefty the character do that. Yeah. But you know, not too many people know that, so that's uh, that's yeah, that's really good yeah. information. I'll tell you, Joe, yeah, you know, let, let me ask you this, too, because was Sonny looking to propose you? I mean, you yeah. were going to get straightened out. Yeah, I, in fact, that conversation, again, took place at Creasy's. Yeah. Me and Sonny, and the first thing he said to me, Michael, he said, that Donnie, he said, let me ask you something. I said, yeah. He said, you ever have any drug arrest? I said, no, never been arrested for drugs. I said, I did some time. And one thing you, you never do is say you did time in a, in a penitentiary because right. I can't talk about, you know, I said, you know, I, I said I did 10, 15 days in the county. If you say you in a penitentiary, there was too many of us everywhere. You know, we would ask yeah, too mean, many questions. Could I sit down and talk about <laughs> life and, you know, uh, who, the, who the guard was? Or, you know, so uh, he said uh, this was in we closed the operation in July. So this might have been, uh, it was right after the hits, May 5th. 
the hits were May 5th when they, when they killed the three capos, right? Right. And uh, he said, the books are going to open up in, in December. He said, I propose you for membership. And uh, I think he said, everybody gave you a thumbs up. He, that's what he said to me. So I, I don't know if that's the way it actually works. But he said, everybody at the, you know, he said, uh, uh, and you're going to get made in December. So Yeah, just so you know, Joe, you probably noticed. But what they do, at least in my case and a lot of cases, uh, when they propose somebody, they're supposed to put your name on a list and send it around to all the families. And say if there's yeah, any well, he said you, objection. You, he said you got thumbs up from everybody. So whether, you know. Well, let me ask you this, Joe, because, you know, we know that in that life, in order to get straightened out, you got to make your bones. Right. right. Did, so were they, were they talking about that in some way or they would have put you in a position to, I mean, I know that, w that would have been something that you couldn't do, but. Yeah, exactly. Well, they gave me the contract for Bruno. Uh, Sunny Red Sun. Yeah, because yeah. he was supposed to show up for that that sit down that they were going to have, you know, when they whacked yeah. the three guys. He didn't show. So Sonny calls me into the motion lounge. We're going to back. I mean, I knew they had whacked the three guys because I had left. He had told me, he says, we got those three guys. Uh, and uh, so Sonny says, look, he said, uh, uh, Bruno was supposed to was supposed to uh, show. He, he didn't show. Uh, he said, I'm giving you the contract. Mm. We had a deal. When I say we had a deal with the FBI. So he, Sonny sent me to Miami to look for him, actually, because he, he thought he was down in Miami. Uh, and the deal was if I found him, I'd call the bureau. We make it look like a hit or if the bureau grabbed him, you know, uh -huh. um, we'd, we'd stage a hit. Uh, but later on, I find out that um, I was supposed to be on that cleanup crew. Oh, really? Yeah. And then at the last minute, they, they called you off. They called me off. Yeah. 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 I knew Bruno very well back then. Yeah. That was, that was the best meeting he ever missed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> For sure. And Sonny told me because he, he was, a, he, he probably was uh, all coked up. Yeah. Back then, yeah. probably very, very likely. Yes. And that's why he sent me to Miami. He says, like, we know he's got, you know, uh, connections down there. And that's where we think, but he, he didn't, he wasn't down there. Because I, I went to all the, you know, I went down there looking. And you bring up something good now, you know, and I, I talk about this and a lot of YouTubers and they make comments all the time. I tell them, listen, we were not the major drug dealers at that time. When I got straightened out, it was all five families. If we dealt with drugs, we die. That's what I was told. Now, I never dealt with drugs. None of my guys ever dealt with drugs. Were some guys doing it on the side? And of course, but we were not allowed to deal in drugs. And people always, no, that's not true, Michael. This guy was a drug dealer. That guy. I said, if they were doing it, they were doing it undercover. They weren't supposed to be doing it. Was that your experience too? Yeah, yeah. That, and that's what I was told too. Uh, now, I mean, you know, Mira was a drug guy. Everybody knew it, but he, I, and I don't know how he, how he got away with it. The only way I can figure because he was bringing in loads of money. I was told the same thing. And that's why I think Sonny asked me, you ever have any drug arrest? Right. And I said, no. I said, I, I don't even take aspirin, Sonny, let alone <laughs> drug arrest. Uh, and, uh, but, but this, that's the same thing I was told. And that, you know, that, that's a, that's an offense that'll get you killed. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because there's people yeah, out there that have a different uh, impression. I, mean, I, was, I was told that from lefty from the get go. And then from Sonny. I remember Lefty told me, you know, he said, Donnie, I'm schooling you. Mm -hmm. I'm schooling you and grooming you to become a made guy. All right. I mean, this is this isn't when I first met him. You know, this is after a couple of years. Right. When I first got in and met him, you know, I had a bushy mustache. And he yeah. says, first thing you've got to do, Donnie, shave that mustache. Yeah. <laughs> said, All right. He said, that's a sign of disrespect if you don't do it. Mm hmm. I said, okay. So I did, you know, and, and, and he says, now I'm going to tell you, he said, things that may get you killed. And <clears throat> one of them was, you know, don't embarrass a made guy in front of other people. Mm -hmm. He said, because if you stay in this life, you're going to, you're going to get into confrontations with people. Okay. He said, don't ever lay your hands on a made guy. 
a made guy slaps you, you got to take it. Mm-hmm. He says, don't back down because you can't show him that you're, you know, you're weak. Right. He said, but don't ever lay your hands on the made guy. That'll get you killed. And then he says, stealing money from the family. That'll get you killed. And uh, becoming a snitch, right? He said, talk. What he actually said was, was talking before a grand jury. Is what he said to me. I was thinking, all right. <clears throat> and, and then he says, and being an informant. And then he says, and Donnie, he said, don't ever fool around with a wise guy's wife, daughter, or girlfriend. <laughs> 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 unless, unless you have good intentions with the daughter and you go talk to the wise guy. <laughs> well, he told he, he schooled you right, no doubt. And then the respect. He said, when you're man, and he's talking like with him and or or the capo, at that time the capo was uh was Michael was Mike Sabella, you know. He said, when your man tells you to do something, or if you're out with your man, you open the car door for him. You opened it. He said, it's all about respect for whoever your man is. No, he, he told you everything he told you was right. No, no doubt about it. And, yeah. you know, I, I schooled my guys the same way. You know, I, I had a thing. I told my crew, I said, look, if you want to become a made guy, I'm not your guy. You guys are my associates. You're my crew. We're going to make a lot of money together because I'm into that. But I'm not going to propose you. And the reason I had that, once you propose a guy, you lose him. That's the end of that. Then he goes on. So I'm saying to myself, what am I going to build these guys up, make them have money, and then lose them, turn them over to somebody else, you know? But but I did tell him that. I said, look, the same way Lefty broke it down to you, that's how I told them. I said, respect. Even though you're going to find things in this life that are going to trouble you, you got to have respect in that way, no no doubt. And... uh, now, now I got to ask you a couple of things. We got to get into the movie a little bit because everybody, you know, it's all about Donnie Brasco, which, by the way, was one of my favorite movies. And I think, and it, 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 Michael, that movie's on every day. Oh, I'm telling you, and I, I watch it every day. I think, I think that was Pacino's greatest role. He was brilliant in that movie. You know, I got to tell you some of the things that really got to me that was so authentic. You walk on, I know when he told you, you know, dress like me, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he made me laugh. When he yeah. told you how to, you know, how to hold your money, put the beaner on the inside or the outside, whatever yeah. he said. The one scene that got me that I was hysterical, and this because of a personal experience, when you're driving in the car with him and you d- roll down a window, he's smoking, wow. he said, Donnie, you want to kill me with that draft? I died laughing because I had the same experience with my boss at the time, Tom DeBella. Yeah, and, yeah, and, sure. yeah, and Andrew Russo. I used to have, I always had a nice car because I had the dealership. So I would drive yeah. them in. I would drive into well, Brooklyn. You didn't Rattie. smoke either, right? No, I never smoked. Me neither. Never smoked. <laughs> so they'd, they would drive, I would sit in the back seat and they would both sit in the front seat driving my car. Andrew would drive and they're smoking like crazy. And I'm dying in a car. I would roll down a window, and Tom would go, you want to kill me with that draft? When I saw <laughs> put the window up. So I put it back. When I saw that scene, I, I think I was the only one in the theater laughing my head off. They didn't get it. We're in Miami. Uh-huh. And he didn't like air conditioning either. You, could, <laughs> oh, no. you couldn't have the air conditioning on in the car. And, Michael, you couldn't have the air conditioning on in the, in the hotel suites we had. Oh, you know, we always God. would get a suite. And there'd be, you know, bedrooms. You couldn't have the air conditioning on. And he smoked English ovals. Oh, God. Oh, they had no God. filter. Didn't they have no filter, the English no, ovals? Yeah, no they filter. Were. Oh, my God. God. So I'd be driving. I'd turn the air conditioning on. Donnie, you know I can't take that air conditioning. He shut. I put the window down. Donnie, you want me to catch a cold? <laughs> I got a draft. I said, Lefty, it's 90 degrees. We're in Miami. Uh, I mean, I know. That's, uh, <laughs> it was so funny. We got time. I'll tell you a funny story. We got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to tell you one more thing before that. The other, the other scene was when he, when he says every week how many scuttles I was giving Sonny Black, and then he said I'm taking care of the mistress and the mistress of the mistress. 
<laughs> I swear, that was the funny. That was the funniest realistic mob movie I ever seen. Just because of his character, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was, and not because it's mine, but it really was realistic. Was but we're in Miami, right? So we got this big suite. And, you know, everything's on the arm, so right, right. it doesn't make any difference. I like had it up to here, you know, because you can't have air conditioning on in the room. I'm, I'm dying in the car. I'm choking because I don't smoke. I'm choking on the smoke. No air conditioning in the car. No windows down. So we're laying out by the pool, and I'm thinking, how the F could I get back at him? I got to do something to get back at him. So I figure, okay. So I said, left, I got to go to the head. I run upstairs. I crank that air conditioning, Michael. I mean, and then what I do is I take the thing off and I, I take the. So he couldn't the, lower it. Yeah, you couldn't. Right? <laughs> Two hours later, because we're out by the pool, we go up, and you could hang meat in that. that room. <laughs> <laughs> he he must have had a heart attack. Donnie, I'm freezing. <laughs> what what what'd you do? I said, left. I didn't do nothing. Turn that air conditioning off. You know. So I go over there and I'm fooling with it. And Donnie, you got to, <laughs> this goes on for about 10 minutes. And he says, call the, call the desk, tell me. And I make believe I call. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he must have I'm died. I'm going to torture as long as I could, Michael. <laughs> you know? Oh, I tell so you. Finally, I had to get to the front desk and, and tell him, hey, there's something wrong with my air conditioning. You set up the maintenance guy. What was with those guys? They couldn't, they smoke like uh, chimneys yeah. and they couldn't take a draft. They couldn't take air yeah. conditioning. No, he couldn't take a draft. I mean, you, and, you know, even it, I'd say, left, let me crack the window a little bit. <laughs> Nothing. No, there's a draft. <laughs> I gotta be, it's 90 degrees out. There's no draft. In, oh, God. No, yeah, but he loved his grandkid. Loved yeah. his grandkid. You know. No, but you know, I, I knew that about him. He was uh, he loved the life. He really yeah. did. Oh, he loved oh, the life. Yeah, no doubt. Yes, no. he did. And you know, he he used to tell me stories about uh, when he was a Galenti's driver uh -huh. and going to Canada. He would say, "When my man told me, Lefty, you stand in that corner until I come back." And he said, and I believe that he would. He said, I'd stand there four or five hours mm -hmm. while my man was in the meeting. I believe him. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I don't, I don't know too much of what's going on in the life now, but uh, I know one thing, it'll never be the same. There's, that, those no. days are gone. No. They're no. gone. I think, no. I think, and you, you may back me up on this, Joe, I think the golden years of Cosa Nostra Mafia in America were from the 50s through the mid 80s. Exactly, I agree with you 100%. 100%. That was the golden years. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, and this was great, Joe. You know, look, I. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was a real, this was a sit down, but. Uh, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> For both of us come out, come out happy. Yeah, yeah, no, this right. we, And you know, you know, Michael, I. I no, wait, what was that? Mike. I forget, what was this? Somebody wanted to ask me a question, I asked you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My, a good buddy of mine. I don't know if you know this, but we, I got a pizza franchise now called Slices. No. Yeah, it's called Sli Slices. Oh, where's it, where's it at? Well, we got seven stores now, but we're going to be franchising all over the country. Right now, they're all in California. So if you ever come out this way, Joe. I'll tell you, you know, you're from New York. You know great pizza. You're going to love it. You're going to love the pizza. Yeah. Where, where do you have them out out there? We have uh, two in L.A. Yeah, one in uh, Newport Beach. Uh -huh. uh, that's where I am. We got one in San Francisco, one up north in San Mateo, and now we're opening one in Dallas. And then we got franchisees now. We're going to open four more in uh, in California, and then we're starting to branch out throughout the country. Good. Good for you. Good luck. And, you know, I want to say we've been together on so many different venues, you know, and I really enjoy talking with you, you know, off camera when we're just sitting around in the green rooms and mm -hmm. just BSing. I value the friendship that, that you and I have, for lack of a better word, you know, developed because, you know, being on different sides of the fence, but now we're on the same sides of the fence. You know what I mean? And what I found is that whenever we talk, whenever we have conversations, there's no bullshit from, <laughs> from either of us. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but. Uh, Absolutely, Joe. I, I tell you, it become a pleasure knowing you. And uh, yeah. I really mean that. And uh, 
I feel close to you for some reason. I don't know if it's just whatever. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I mean it. When I talk to you, it's it's crazy. It's like I I I go back to a nice era in my life that I yeah, don't have yeah. out here anymore. So yeah, well, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, I don't have contact with any with anybody in a former life, you know. But it, it's good. If I can ask you, if I can give my podcast another plug, is oh, hundred percent. No, yeah, no, it's, talk about it because I'm going to be one of your guests. For sure. And you are. My my podcast is a deep cover to Real Donnie Brasco, and that's uh, the production company's Jam Street Media. But, of course, you can get it anywhere you get your podcast. The other one is The uh, the Undercovers, uh, mm. and that's narrated by uh, Ed O'Neill with uh, Ray Liotti does some narration. They're in season two. I'm, I'm season two of, of that podcast, and it's Unfinished Business. And that one's not out yet. Uh, but my deep cover, The Real Donnie Brasco, you can hear the 19 episodes that we've already laid down. Well, please send me a link because when this interview runs, I'll, I'll put it on there and okay. I'll, keep it on, I'll keep it on there. So they'll always see the link. You know, okay, all, good. Now, when are you going to lay this one down, Mike? Uh, we might do it as if we can get it edited in time, Michael, up on Saturday. And if, oh. if not, definitely Should next week. Let me know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If not, definitely next week. But we'll try to move it for Saturday. And uh, right. do me one favor, too. When you see Ed O'Neill, if you speak to him. Yeah, I, maybe about once a week. Yeah, he, he, I tell you, he's a great guy, man. I met him one time. We spoke for a while. Tell him I met him with Boom Boom Mancini, with Ray. The fighters. Yeah, he's good friends with Boom Boom. Yeah, they're good fighters. And we met outside of uh, Il Forno Restaurant in uh, Santa Monica. He used to hang out there. And we met. And we I liked him right away, immediately. Oh, he's a regular guy. Well, you know what happened? When I was in uh, I was in jail, they had me in L.A. County Jail. I was in a hole there, and we had the bars in the hole. It wasn't a closed door. And I had a television set, and I used to watch Married with Children every night. <laughs> it was, it was a highlight of my day. He's away from that, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, it was a highlight of my day, but he was such a nice guy. But I, let me ask you this question for my partner. He said, were you ever out anywhere since, since you know, you came out of undercover and anybody yeah. might have recognized you anywhere? You know, it was funny <clears throat> you, you mentioned that. A few years ago, I'm down on Mulberry Street. I was doing a, uh, a documentary. Uh -huh. And they wanted to go down and walk Mulberry Street. Right. And I said, okay. So we're walking by Casabella's. Yeah. Right? You know where that is, yeah, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I hear, hey, Donnie. <laughs> and I turn around, and it's one of the Gallo brothers. Uh, who's the one that's st still alive? Uh, Albert's not alive, is he? No. no, Joey and Albert, I think, are both dead. I forget the other one. Is it, is it Kid? Kid, Kid Blast? Blast? Is that, well, I don't remember, but <laughs> he says, hey, Donnie. I turn around. I said, now, how are you recognized me? I mean, it's been so many years. Yeah. yeah. I said, yeah. He said, haven't you done enough effing damage down here? <laughs> so I turned around, Michael. I said, obviously not because I didn't put you in jail. <laughs> he, started, he started laughing, you know. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I can't think of any other ones where, you know, they actually recognize me. Hey, like I said, it's been a long time, Joe. Yeah, it has. It has. I hope that uh, if they have that conference in San Diego this year, I think, did you hear anything about it? I think they're. I think they're looking at October now. Okay. Well, listen. If they do, try to try to plan some extra time. Okay, I will. Yeah, we'll take you up to the place. You have a slice of great pizza. We'll spend a little oh, time together. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Of course, of course. Yeah, it's not that far, right? It's maybe an hour from San Diego where I am, Newport Beach. And the missus said to say hello. Oh, thank you. And and same from my family. They were excited that I was doing. You know, this was uh, you and Mike Tyson were the two most requested interviews. <laughs> Is that right? I know Mike not really good, good. Uh -huh. I mean, I've, I've spoken to him on the phone and everything because – my good friend, he's a retired FBI agent now. He was with Mike when Mike was with Cuss. Really? That, that far yeah. back? And wow. They're like this. I mean, uh -huh. they're like brothers, Mike and, uh, and Mark. Yeah. Wow. So every once in a while, if I'm with Mark and he's talking to, to Mike, he'll say, here, talk to Mike. You know? And Mike says, hey, Donnie. <laughs> I said, Mike, what do, you, what do you want to meet me for? You're Mike Tyson, man. <laughs> Yeah, but he loves this stuff, man. I did a, I did his podcast 
And we yeah. got like, I don't know, five, six million viewers, but he he's a character. He was I smoking, know. he was smoking in the pot the oh, whole time. Yeah. He, he offered it to me. I says, Mike, I might be the only guy that you have interviewed that's going to refuse it, but I'm not taking it. He's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, Donnie was great. I really appreciate really you pleasure. coming on, really. And uh, I enjoyed talking with you so much. I know we'll, we'll continue to do this. Yeah, and yeah. Um, send me the links for sure. I will. Yeah, I'll yeah. post them uh, for sure on this. And I, like I said, I'll keep them on mine. So I'll keep directing people towards it. Okay, good. All right. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Now, if it's going, as soon as it goes up, I'll let you know a little bit in advance. Okay. All right. God bless. All right. God bless. Have a good night. Say hello. Say hello. Too. Okay. Too. Bye bye. So there you have it. That was the full interview with uh, Agent Donnie Brasco, uh, Joe Pistone, the real Johnny Brasco. It was fascinating. I'll be honest with you, people. I have enjoyed it so much talking with Joe. You know, even though we were on different sides, he was so deep undercover. He got to know so many of my friends. Unfortunately, they made mistakes. Joe did take them down, but he always did it the right way. Didn't frame anybody, gathered information the right way. And we on the street, we said, hey, if you agents do your job and we screw up and you catch us, you catch us. That's it. There's no animosity there. That's it. We're, we're on different sides. So I really hope you enjoyed this. I was fascinated by some of the things that uh, that uh, uh, Joe had said. He's a dear friend of mine now. I'm happy to say that. We've been uh, knowing each other now for several years. And if you enjoyed this interview, tune into his podcast. Fascinating. You know, real stuff. This is a guy, he doesn't uh, BS. This is real stuff you're going to hear from a, a, an agent that was deeply undercover. So we got more interviews coming up. I hope you really enjoyed this one. Mike Tyson will be coming up. COVID is starting to go away and we're going to be bringing people into the studio. We'll do it on Zoom, whatever way we can get information out to you. I hope you like the style. I'm not interviewing people. We're just having sit downs a friendly chat, getting into some things that you haven't heard before. So that's it. How do I always leave you? Be safe, be healthy, God bless, and I will see you next time. Great. That was, that is, that was so good.